Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to talk about, I'm here to um, do my NFC uh, Championship uh, preview for this Sunday's uh, NFC Championship between the Detroit Lions and San Francisco 49ers. I'll, I'll do the AFC Championship uh, preview tomorrow, but let's get the NFC title game here. I think some really good case to this game, for me, is can the 49ers stop the run in this game? They struggle to stop the run against uh, Green Bay. But with the Lions pass defense, can they deliver against Brock Purdy? Will Debo Samuel play? A lot of key factors for both teams. But consider this season the NFC Championship like game matchup a rare treat. The San Francisco 49ers and Detroit Lions faced off in the postseason only twice, and both games were barn, burner, barn, burner, barn burners. Detroit last won NFL Championship 1957. It reached that game by mounting a 20 point comeback against the 49ers. And the 49ers ended up regretting their premature exuberance when the Lions rallied for that 31-27 victory. And then the 49ers got vengeance going back to beat Detroit in 1983. It's the only two times they've ever played. Detroit would only win would would win only one playoff game. A victory over the Cowboys in 1991. Between that 1983 heartbreak and this 2023 season, which has seen a resurgence under Coach Dan Campbell, who's turned that team around in three years to NFC title, an NFC title appearance. Quarterback Jared Goff and a defense I think is improving. Have the Lions truly made strides enough to challenge the 49ers? Um, they're only who are favored by seven points, according to Bet MGM. So, I want to go over some stats here. Um, Examined with a comparison of each team's of race ratings and defense adjusted and defense adjusted value over average. Uh, the Lions offense is ranked fifth of plus thirteen point eight in um, the adjusted value over average. Pass offense seventh, run offense fourth. So they're elite. They have an elite offense with with an elite offense ranked fifth, their pass offense ranked seventh, and the run offense ranked fourth. Uh, they have a really good offense. Their defense, though, um, 13th. A uh, pass defense, 16th. But their run defense is really good, but their special teams is 19th and overall 7th. So the Lions have failed at a top 10 offense for now two consecutive seasons. The surge of their defense from taking number 27th in 2022 to number 13 this season, which is very impressive. And it's been enough to push, this, to push the team from a narrow, narrow playoff miss to a title game, to the NFC title game. But Detroit's two postseason wins have come against competition that's notably, weak, notably I guess, weaker than the 49ers. And I don't know if it's that weak because the Rams and Buccaneers are two tough teams. The Lions beat the Rams 24-23 in the wildcard round, ranked number 17. Um, and then the Bucks, but... I think those are two good wins, especially in the playoffs, because you never know upsets can happen. So I don't think those are weak wins. Those are two good wins, especially when two playoff games at home. But the 49ers, meanwhile, they have an elite statistical profile. Number one in offense. Number one in pass offense. Number two in run offense. Number four in defense. Number four in pass defense. The run defense is a concern, though, ranked 15th. And overall second, but the special teams is 25th. Those are two concerns I have in this football game for the 49ers. It's their special teams, because it's not really that good, and the run defense. There's only two, only one pronounced weakness, I guess, and, there's, and that's their number 25 ranked special team. The Lions have also been mediocre this season, but a look deeper under the hood, starting with examination of the 49ers' troubles, I guess, in their narrow divisional round victory over the, over the Green Bay Packers, shows there's at least one more crack Detroit might be able to exploit. And here's the primary points of concern, I think, for both teams. And the 49ers fracture points, the run defense, you know, ranked um, 15. And the Green Bay Packers running back Aaron Jones tracked up 108 yards on just 18 carries against the 49ers, averaging 6 yards per carry. And the DVOA, which adjusts for strength of schedule, you know, has San Francisco's run defense at 15. Uh, unit ranks even lower. The unit ranks even lower, number 26 in expected points added per play, but the measurement doesn't adjust for quality opponent. Neither metric is a good sign for the 49ers, who were hoping that the return of Deuce tackle Eric Garnstead who returned 
from a foot injury would help solidify their run defense. While Armstead did play well, the 49ers struggled to consistently firm the edges, especially with Chase Young, who really hasn't done much this year. And the lines, you know, with those running backs, with a bruising turn to 224 pound running back David Montgomery, and you have the speedier Jameer Gibbs present a run offense that looks built to get the 49ers problem because their run defense has really struggled this year's the 49ers. And Detroit's off the line has been particularly good in the ground game with Panay Sewell, Frank Ragnall, Grim Glassnell, and Taylor Decker paving the way to pro football focus a second best run blocking grade. They're a really good offensive line run and in the run and in the pass. Only the 49ers rank higher on offensive line, so most teams are really off the lines. I think it's going to be the battle of the line of scrimmage that can decide this game. And the line's been the DVOA's number one run defense. So the run defense has been excellent. The pass defense has to at least be good, okay. It can't be bad. It just has to be good enough. Detroit's offense operates through thor thorough. It's run pass adaptability. Golf has been reasonably accurate this year. And an efficient this within this framework and lines up the number nine at rank number nine in time possession per drive thanks to their mouse they really amount to run pass. Uh, the Packers drag the 49ers into an uncomfortably placed by uh, hogging the ball early thir by an, well, early thorough and even offensive distribution. The Detroit might be equipped to replicate replicate rep replicate that same formula. And Ty and Sam is a major pivot point as well with this offense, um, because he can credibly sell both run and pass the line of scrimmage with his 86 catches, 889 yards, and 10 touchdowns a season from the regular season and playoffs. And he should and he should lock horns to know though with 49ers star linebackers Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw, who's come off a two interception that ultimately that ultimately stopped Green Bay and got the game clincher. We'll see. Can the Lions take aim at 49ers, uh, their third quarter, Embry Thomas, as successful as the Packers did for a good chunk of Saturday's game? Detroit's top wideout is on Ross St. Brown, who is among the league leaders with 119 catches for 1,515 yards this, year, this season. There's been a significant drop-off in production from him to their other feature receivers, Jameson Williams, Josh Reynolds. That's from their balance, getting it to Sam Laporta, um, on Ross St. Brown, a good balance with this team. They use the six foot three rounds as a versatile weapon both outside and in the slot. Outside of a brief five game stint with the Tides in twenty twenty one, he's played with golf since twenty seventeen in LA. So expect the Lions to mix and match their attacks against Tom Embry Thomas. He's improved this year, but he's not gonna be able to keep up with say Omar St. Brown or um Jameson Williams. Um, who enters the game whenever the 49ers are in the nickel package for Thomas. It's worth noting that golf has been a notch worse this season on the road than at home, and also significantly worse outdoors than inside. The Lions host, ga host games inside on turf, while Levi's team, the side of Sunday's mount, is outside of natural grass, and golf has dropped from 8.1 yards per tent, which ranks 4th, when playing indoors 6.5 yards per tent, which ranks 25th, I guess. And golf's efficiency ranks are also significantly worse when he's been under pressure. Like, you look at the stats here uh, in a um, pocket, 75.9 completion, 4th, 8.3 yards per attempt, ninth, second EPA slash play, and 25 touchdowns, 4th under pressure, 50.7 completion percentage, percentage 14th, 6.3 yards per attempt, 13th, 18th in EPA slash play, and 6th touchdown, which is 14th. So, the 49ers want to get a lot of pressure on Jared Goff if they want to have some success. So the 49ers cave in, seems clear. They want to play this game on their passing rush terms, but they will require solving their biggest weakness to slow down to slow Detroit's powerful run game. If they can't shut, if they can't stop the run game, it's gonna be a long day for that 49ers defense. Because the because then the Lions can you know do some play action as well. I mean, it, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a long game if they can't stop Detroit's uh if they can't stop Detroit's uh, run game. That's my concern for the 49ers for Detroit. Um, I'd say my biggest concern is pass defense. Versatile lines defensive back, they have C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Well, was one of the biggest trash talkers. Uh, made waves in October criticizing Debo Samuel for his role in the pregame scuffle. Uh, Gardner-Johnson last played for the Eagles last season before signing with Detroit and then called him out on social media. And they said, you better hope all that talk you be done when, when we see you all, whatever end it may be, because I can guard you. You can't run rafts, you're a running back, and basically stuff like that. And Samuel stats for Sunday's title games in question after he injured his shoulder against the Packers, but 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan, shuts, Kyle Shanahan said the x-rays came back negative. So there's hope he'll be ready to go, which 
for what might be a highly charged matchup between Garner Johnson and Detroit defense, because that may be interesting to see, you know, Debo Samuel versus C.J. Garner Johnson, the trash talk. And the line's been relatively porous against the pass this season, although Garner Johnson missed most of the year with a torn pectoral. He returned earlier this month and is delivering two interceptions since, including one the divisional round, which should be very interesting. Now, Detroit's outside corners, Cameron Sun and Kendall Vildor, haven't had great seasons. They've allowed 112.0 and 140.6 pass rates, respectively. One target and coverage. Nickelback Brian Branch has been better, allowing an 86.8 passer rating to his coverage. The 49ers should have their usual but the 49ers should have their usual edge against linebackers. Alex Anzalone and Derrick Barnes in the passing game. They've been decent to coverage, but the praise of the running back, you know, Chris McCaffrey, George Kittle, consistently of the 49ers a big advantage on the second level. Their choice potential advantages on the defense can come against the run and pass pass rushing situation against the 49ers off the line because Aiden Hutchinson has racked up 11 and a half sacks this season and should, be pl- and should see plenty of reps against 49ers right tackle Colton McKivitz. While big defensive tackle, um, Elaine McNeil has five saves to go along with the rigid resume on the run defense. So it's going to be up to the 49ers to neutralize both of those uh, linemen. If they do, their pronounced offensive advantages elsewhere should have room to shine. If not, um, the Lions may have yet another opening to couple with their productive run game on the other side of the ball, and that can make for a very close MC title game. That's really not to say for my preview. Those are really my two concerns for both teams. For the Lions, is their pass defense, and for the 49ers, their run defense. And both teams' special teams is mediocre. But this is a really tough game because I really want Detroit to win because I'd like to see Detroit go to the Super Bowl. But it's hard to pick against the 49ers at home because the pass defense, I feel like Debo Samuel is going to play. I don't know. I want to pick Detroit. It's tough to pick against the 49ers, though, at home. I mean, they kind of show against the Packers, but they still come out with a win. They probably played their worst game of the year, I felt like, and they still won. It's a tough game to pick, because Ryan's, the Lions' deep offense is top 10 in every category, but the 49ers, you know, is top 5 in every category. The only thing that's really bad is their run defense and special teams, but the special teams for the Lions is kind of mediocre, and their pass defense isn't good. Kind of tough game to pick, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, my original pick um, after the game Sunday, I picked Detroit, but uh, the run, the pass defense is a concern for me. Uh, I think it'll be a high scoring game because both defenses, offenses are top five and ten in the in the in the metrics. But I'm going to go with San Francisco at home. I think Brock Purdy and the um, 49ers uh, offense and defense will make just enough plays to win. And I think Detroit will come up short. I'm going to say 30 to 27, uh, 49ers missed the Super Bowl. So that's all I have to say for this NFC Championship preview. So until next time, peace. And I'll do the AFC Championship preview tomorrow.